Hello and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Brightwell alongside Richard Mulroney. And Coach, we start off the show uh, with, with some unfortunate news. Uh, when we recorded this on Tuesday morning, just finding about the uh, news about the passing of uh, a longtime coach at the University of Memphis, Chris Bartels. Even though you didn't play for him, I know you, you knew him very well. Uh, his son Ted is on uh, Brooks Staff. He's a guy that probably recruited you coming out of high school. And he's a guy that really – as far as Memphis men's soccer took over in 1988 and, and, and really elevated them, just a six-year program at that point really elevated that program. Absolutely. I mean, first off, thoughts and condolences to his family. Teddy's obviously on the women's staff. Um, like I said, just sad news. Got that yesterday. And, you know, the, the soccer community is big here in Memphis, but it's also small for the fact that, you know, three or four people reached out and it spread like wildfire just because he meant that much to people not only on the field, but all, you know, um, a lot of my friends played for him. Uh, yes, he recruited me. I, I actually almost, you know, it was one of my final choices as well. Um, and he was a big reason why I was going to come here just because I trusted him. Uh, I thought he was always fair. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, like you said, he laid a foundation here at the university to take the program uh, to the levels that he did with, uh, you know, making the NCAA tournament for the first time, first NCAA championship. Uh, he laid a foundation here. And I know Coach Grant, feels the same way who took over after uh, Chris left or whatever. And then obviously me, me filling that spot now, it's a little strange sitting in this seat knowing that he was here, but I also feel like I was, I'm very proud to be representing that knowing that Chris set a, a great example. Um, and even off the field, like I said, he's known as a soccer coach, but great father, great person. I'd see him out at Mike Rose, you know, at my kids games, he's out there watching games and just having a good time, smile on his face and uh, you know, always had a good story as well. So He'll be missed, but uh, we won't forget about him whatsoever from the legacy that he left here at the University of Memphis. Well, I'm sure he'd want you to, uh, to keep your focus on this weekend with, with SMU uh, coming up. So let's let's get into uh, the, the rest of the topics we're going to discuss today. Start off with a couple of preseason all-conference players. Uh, Peter and German make the uh, preseason all-conference team. Absolutely. Yeah, I think obviously it's been over a year since we played, but for coaches to still remember what, the, what they're able to do, uh, not last fall, but the fall before, it speaks highly of the way they play. They're a big piece of the program, um, and they got recognized for that. And, you know, for me personally, I love to see their names on it, but I, it's more important to see that University of Memphis is behind them because they represent us. We've got two of those 11, um, but at the same time, I know we've got other players that are more than capable of really making a difference this, uh, this spring as well. So kudos to them. We're going to need every bit of them, but we're going to need everybody uh, in the starting lineup along with the, the reserves as well because – as we know, with challenging times and missing players, whether it be COVID, whether it be for whatever reason, uh, they're going to play, play a big piece of that. But as we know, it's going to take all, all the lineup, not just those two. When you look up front, finding a, a dynamic score or some offense this year, uh, what, what do you think about and, and what are your thoughts on Javon Prado? He showed last year as a freshman. Uh, he's got the capability. It's a year under his belt, a little bit more maturity now this year for Javon. That's it. I think he's mature. I think he was – it was great to have him here last fall, and he got to, you know, sort of sit behind what Sam did. Sam scored, what, 12 or 13 goals. Sam caught fire, uh, scored some big goals. It's not just about the goals either. It's about how he defended uh, his mentality in the locker room and that maturity. So I think Javon got to learn from a good one. And, yeah, as of right now, Javon's up top for us, along with others. I, I, I believe in our other forwards that are going to be able to get time. But Javon's proven to get that time last year, scored some goals for us as a matured and. Yeah, I'll throw this in there as well. He's able to make a 4.0 this last semester. So he's getting he's taking care of it on and off the field. And I think that goes hand in hand. And we trust him to have a, a good spring this season. Um, but at the same time, you know, we'll, we'll, he's going to need help up there along with uh, the rest of our team. So people are going to fill in. But Javon's I'm looking forward to watching him play this spring. Well, let's talk about in that you got Parker back and he was solid last year. So you've got to feel good, at least on that back line, having Parker back there. It is. You know, like I said, we've had some turnover on that back line. You know, Ben's gone. Jackson's gone. Um, and then on one of our outside backs is transferred. So, again, we're not, you know, it's not a you know, barn fire by any means. We're not, you know, freaking out here. But at the same time, there's some spots to fill. But one spot that doesn't need to be is Parker. Obviously, he has started since his freshman year. You know, he's gotten a couple of years under his belt. The experience is there. He's been there, done that. And obviously, uh, you know, against SMU this, uh, this Saturday, 
He played in that game last year, and he's played in other games that we didn't win against them. So all in all, we're in good hands in the, in the net with him. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's always good to feel confident back there knowing you've got someone that has experience at the uh, college level, and not only that, playing in big games that are representing our, our university. How big is it to have a veteran, though, with, with Parker? You mentioned the turnover on, on that defensive line in front of him. So he'll have to do a lot of probably uh, coaching on the field as well as playing his position. It. It's a big piece. It is. Like I said, there's some teams that are going in this year that have, are, you know, starting a true freshman or maybe starting a player that hasn't played. And it's been over 11 months or, tw or excuse me, 12, 12 plus months. You know, some guys didn't get spring minutes after their seniors left. So to have that spot with the experience that is stepping in there, you can sleep a little better at night. And obviously, you know, there's stuff that Parker still needs to improve upon, but at the same time, we know what the product is more so than us wondering what the product's going to be. So, uh, like I said, it's good to be able to pencil him in. And, you know, we feel confident in Trevor as well if Parker's not able to go. So we're in a good situation in, in our nets, and we're not really concerned about that too much. How, how excited are the guys? I mean, you're, you're a few days away from finally getting to play a game. And it really, it's going to be, uh, what, last uh, the, the November of 2019, so 14, 15 months since most of these guys have played any kind, yeah. kind of organized match. There, there's an excitement for sure. Like I said, we got there almost – in the fall. And then, you know, unfortunately it got pulled away from us. So there was disappointment. So you add that disappointment to it, adding that, you know, like I said, some of these guys didn't play last spring. We got to get those three uh, spring games in. Some of those guys were injured, missed that. So our last game was that temple one, that heartbreaker in the quarterfinal. And uh, you know, we talked about that on our last show, how that's sort of sitting in on us and uh, using that to motivate, but you put that all that together and it's, there's some excitement in there, but we got to make sure that we stay composed and, you know, make sure we don't go run out there crazy because we're playing against a, a top 10 team that uh, they're, they're coming here to win. They don't come in to tie. They don't, they're obviously not coming here to not get a result and they're going to test us right off the bat. But all in all, the guys are ready for it. And I tell you what, we could, the game was in five minutes. There wouldn't be an issue of playing it. So we just got to make sure we prepare this week, get ready to f uh, finish off the final details, but the guys are going to be up for it. No doubt. Well, without playing any non-conference games, you guys are playing uh, everybody in, in the league this year. So you've got limited opportunities and everyone's going to have to play everyone. So there's no advantage or disadvantage, just how the schedule stacks up. But you mentioned you do get the, uh, the perennial, perennial favorite right off the bat. I mean, do you like having that challenge? Let's just go ahead and, and, and get into it. Yeah. I mean, like whether they were the, actually they're our fourth game as well. So within the first five, we played them, which is fine. Like I said, you're gonna have to play them at some point. And there's, there's, there's ways of looking at it of, man, you got to play them that early. And if your team's not ready, you could be embarrassed. But at the same time, if they're not ready and we're, you know, we're firing on all cylinders, it could be an opportunity for us. So it's, it's just like taking a glass half full, knowing that, you know what, UCF, you know, they, SMU beat UCF in that, uh, in the second round. So UCF's just as good as they were also. So we got played them twice. We know what Tulsa is. USF obviously beat us here. So end of the day, careful what you wish for, but at the same time, um, we're excited. Obviously, SMU coming in, it speaks for itself. Kevin's done a great job with that program. Um, we've obviously proven that we've played them well in the past. And, um, you know, if you can't get up for this one, for everything that we just talked about, then you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be there on Saturday. But at the same time, I don't think that's the issue. And, you know, whether it's SMU the first game or whoever, it's you know, next person up. And that's obviously against the Mustangs on Saturday. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You played down there in Dallas last year. Is that correct? Yeah, we had our one game there, and that obviously didn't have a home and away series with them. So yeah. we'll be back there, I think, in our fourth week. But at the same time, our focus is, is this weekend for sure. It's going to be exciting for you, even though I know it's going to be limited to, to players' families and staff families. You won't be able to let the general public into the, the matches. It, it will be the first time you've got a, a team like SMU on the home pitch over the Murphy Complex. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I talked to their coach a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I just wanted to remind you, yeah, we're, we've moved places. Because last year, a few days before a couple of the games – team uh, coach were like are you not at uh, Mike Rose anymore and no we moved so just making sure he didn't know because yeah SMU hasn't visited here yet so uh, very proud of what we got over there obviously um, with the boards um, and it's it's a work in progress but to finally be at home against that team uh, like I said doesn't win you games but it's it's a nice feeling knowing we can walk out, walk out of our official locker room and uh, and, and compete on our, our home field against a, a top 10 team all right coach as always we appreciate it and go get them this weekend I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. Richard Mulroney, I'm Jeff Brightwell with the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.